A lot of people have been brainwashed by the hydrogen cult. I'm sorry, it is a cult because there is so much misinformation around. The biggest part of misinformation, the biggest thing that people believe, which is actually a myth, is that green hydrogen is around and hydrogen is clean. It's good. It's, it's you know, it's a thing we should be using. And in fact, that isn't true. It's blatantly, patently, obviously false. And it's a myth that the fossil fuel industry has tried to make you believe in order to think that you should stay, keep on buying fossil fuels. Hydrogen actually is basically just a byproduct of fossil fuels right now, but that could change. There are solar panels which are about to enter production, which apparently can actually generate hydrogen. Now that would actually be green hydrogen. Right now, almost all the world's hydrogen is produced by burning fossil fuels, but this would actually change that story. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. My name's Sam Evans for you new subscribers. And if you're new, you can join our Facebook group. I'll put a link in the description below. And there is an option to become a member of the channel as well. And then you'll get access to one video every day, a few days in advance of everyone else. Hydrogen producing rooftop solar panels are nearing commercialization. That's the key point here. There is like thousands of YouTube videos about all these products that will never really exist because they are just kind of ideas, concepts, things that people made that actually couldn't be commercialized. But this is a different story. KU Leuven researchers have developed rooftop panels that capture both solar power and water from the air. Like traditional PV modules, hydrogen panels are also connected, but via gas tubes instead of electric cables. The researchers are now preparing to bring this technology to mass market via a spin-off company. Researchers in Belgium have created a hydrogen panel or a solar panel, hydrogen panel hybrid that directly converts water vapor from the air into hydrogen gas. And this occurs with the help of sunlight. They claim it produces 250 liters of hydrogen per day at an efficiency of 15%, which seems remarkably high. They're developing it under the SolarHID project, which is now in a transition phase from research to spin off. Now, 250 liters of hydrogen per day, how far could you go in an electric car? When I say electric car, I mean, the truth is hydrogen fuel cell cars are actually electric cars with obviously hydrogen storage mechanism in them. First of all, you have to convert the number from liters to kilos. So 14 liters of hydrogen is about equivalent to 2.3 kilos in hydrogen weight, or 6.4 liters is equivalent to one pound. Toyota Mirai hydrogen powered car can do around about a thousand kilometers of range with 5.7 kilos of hydrogen. So as you can see, 250 kilos of hydrogen would get you around 44,600 kilometers of range in a hydrogen powered car. So one panel would give you an insane amount. I mean, this would be enough for about a year's worth of driving. In a nutshell, hydrogen panels are modules that use solar energy to split water molecules and produce hydrogen gas. This means only the most arid places on earth are too dry for hydrogen panels to work efficiently. They're akin to classical solar modules, but instead of an electric cable, they're connected via gas tubes. Specifically, electricity is produced by the top layer solar panel with a system of tubes underneath where the hydrogen is produced from water molecules extracted directly from the air using a membrane. Solar heat, Hydrogen panels are compatible with most commercial modern PV modules, which are directly plugged into our system, says the company. This way we can benefit from the ongoing developments and cost reductions in the PV industry. To further enhance this energy, Solheed hydrogen panels are compatible with common PV mounting structures. What this would mean is if you actually owned the hydrogen producing part of the system, you could potentially still use it and connect it to, say, modern solar panels in 20 years' time, which will be much more efficient than today's solar panels. And in theory, then, it would give you a lot more hydrogen for the actual size of the solar panels that you're using. The researchers describe the hydrogen panel as small-scale, modular, and ideal for decentralized production. This is the key important part here. To me, hydrogen-powered cars simply do not work because you need to go to a hydrogen station, and there's very few of those in the world, and then pay for hydrogen, right? Which is a very inefficient thing to do for a truck to take the hydrogen to the station. Those trucks are very inefficient in comparison even to gasoline. But if you're producing the hydrogen yourself and you're not reliant on fossil fuel companies, this is where 
and when a hydrogen car would in theory make a lot of sense. Now the company estimated that 20 of the panels would supply electricity and heat for a well insulated house with a heat pump all winter long. When installed alongside a solar thermal collector and traditional solar panels, hydrogen panels could help heat homes and provide electricity throughout the year. The hydrogen panels themselves do not store hydrogen and work at very low pressure. This has several safety and cost benefits. The hydrogen is collected centrally from the hydrogen panel plant and then compressed if needed. Hydrogen can be stored indefinitely in compressed form. Of course, certain applications do not require compression or will use other means of storage. Now, hydrogen produced by sol heat panels can be used in a wide range of applications, including, of course, mobility. In the shorter term, they said, we are mostly targeting mid-size applications such as backup power logistics, heavy transport, but also providing energy in the global south. Later, you could think of anything from large-scale ammonia production down to small-scale off grid systems. Now the researchers say that they have foresee a similar system price cost curve like the ones seen in PV. In other words, they're expensive now, but in the future, they could be affordable enough for the average person to own one. And they said that they use non-precious materials to keep the hydrogen panels affordable. They've tested several prototypes since the project launched back in 2011, 11 years ago, and they're ready to launch industrial production of hydrogen panels within the next few months. In September, the Solheed project moved from the university labs to a new 350 square where meter production space close to the Belgian town of Leuven, where pilot production lines were established with the help of Flemish government funding. Initially, the team will produce a few dozen hydrogen panels for small scale pilot projects. But by 2026, the team expects to scale up production to 5,000 panels per year. Of course, there's still a small number on a global scale. We need more companies getting involved in this work. At this moment, we expect that the product will be commercially available from 2026 onwards. When we achieve mass production, said the company, the price will be close to that of PV modules today. Realistically, if they're saying they're going to be commercially available in 2026, more than likely that'll be on a small scale. Now for this to really impact the world, we would need production on a level of at least a thousand times the number this company is looking at within the next decade. So are these systems going to change the world of hydrogen powered cars? Absolutely not. That is a definite no, unless many other companies got him on board. Billions of dollars were invested into this and we saw factories popping up all over the world. That could happen in 20 to 30 years time, but it won't happen before 2030. And the reason this more than likely won't happen at a scale of electric cars is because by the time these products, these systems are mass produced, electric cars and the technology in electric cars will have improved significantly. We'll see massive cost reductions in those. And by then the game and the race will be over. Clean cars will be solved and there'll be no real reason companies and people to actually go and buy a hydrogen powered car. That said, that doesn't mean these systems are not gonna work. Will they work for trucking? Potentially also for say shipping industry? They could. And I think they will. And they could even work for energy use as well on a level of industrial scale storage and energy production. But that is a completely different game. Now, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.